because that's uh, smoking quite a bit. Good reason to make sure that you've got a respirator or something like that if you aren't in a well-ventilated area, because check that out. That's a lot of heat that's coming off of this, and we're gonna tell you why that's happening here in a little bit. But before we get to that, let's talk about why we would use cotton in the first place. Well, you know that super glue is a strong bond as it is, right? You're probably using it already in your aquarium. The difference is, when you're doing a build like this, for example, maybe it's an Iwagumi look or some other structure you're building or an arch or something like that, you need to have a stronger bond than just what super glue will offer. When you add cotton into the mix, it changes the game. And I'll talk about the science as to why that happens in just a little bit. But first and foremost, you have probably heard or even believe that super glue is going to immediately harden when it gets in water. I'm here to tell you that does not happen. Super glue contains cyanoacrylate, which does harden with moisture. That's technically how super glue works. However, it's not immediate. It's not even immediate when you put it with cotton. The only way to make it immediate is to use an accelerator like this one. And what this does is it accelerates that polymerization process that's going on, which again, we'll get to in a little bit. And that is how you can continue to build your scapes. You can make something like this stick and hold and then move on. All right, now you have to make a decision, or at least we thought you did, between gel glue and liquid super glue. Now I can tell you guys that from the beginning, I've always been a fan of extra thick super glue. And the reason is, is because it's easier to use, it's less messy, it doesn't get all over the place, and you can spot weld little things without having a lot of drips, right? I like that, especially if you're using it on a plant. If you run it along the side of a rhizome, you're not getting glue all over the roots. Now, the problem, however, is it doesn't work quite as well with cotton as liquid super glue does. And I'm actually going back on something that I once said earlier, which was you only need gel. What I think is you need both. Let's say you wanted to use cotton with two rocks like this, right? First and foremost, you always don't need to use a full cotton ball, so definitely tear it apart. And let's say we use only gel glue, right? So I'm gonna spot weld this on here like that, which I do like for gel glue, which is one of the reasons why you would use both. And let's say I fully saturate this thing. Really get it nice and covered with that gel glue, all right? And let's say I also take an accelerator and I harden that right up. So I'm gonna sandwich that in. I'm gonna hit it from all sides with this accelerator here. And I'm gonna give that about 10 seconds or so and the glue is going to harden. But what's gonna happen, which you'll see, is the gel glue on the top of the cotton is gonna harden and the gel glue on the bottom of the cotton is gonna harden. But because we only put gel glue on the cotton, that glue did not get all the way into the middle of the cotton. So when I break it apart, you've got dry cotton in there, even though you use the accelerator, even though you use super glue. What we're gonna do instead of just using gel super glue is we're going to use both. And one of the keys here, you guys, is to make sure that number one with the gel glue, I like to spot weld it in place so that cotton stays right where I want it. But you've gotta use a small amount of cotton. One of the big mistakes here is people use too much cotton. That also creates a much harder reaction. But on top of that, it's harder to get the cotton fully saturated, which is ultimately the goal. So as I pour this liquid super glue in, I'm going to actually like hold this up and try to make sure that I'm getting all the way down into that cotton. I want that to be fully, fully saturated. Once that is, then I'll put this on there, then I'll hit it with the accelerator because that's what's going to, again, make this process, what would naturally happen anyway, just happen a lot faster. That's all it is. We're not changing anything. The same thing's happening with the super glue and the cotton. We're just making it happen faster so that we can keep moving on with our aquascape, right? So once you have that done, now, if you take a look at this, even like this has been 10, 15 seconds real time. This is, I'm getting, look at how sticky that is, right? That is hard. That is hard for me to separate right now because 
And the key to doing that was the small amount of cotton. I just want to reiterate that. If you're using a big clump of cotton, you are inevitably going to have a dry spot in the middle. That is a weak spot and that cotton is going to separate. So thin, spread out cotton is going to give you the same benefit with the fibers. So we said we were going to talk about the science of this. Let's figure out what's going on. Why is this smoking and all that craziness? All right, you guys have probably heard of something called cyanoacrylate. And cyanoacrylate is the main ingredient in superglue. It's made up of something called monomers, which is two carbon atoms with a double bond. What happens though, is you add moisture and that can be in the form of water. It can also be in the form of moisture in the air, even the moisture on your skin. And that causes a reaction, basically anionic polymerization, which means that this bond will open up and start to bond with other molecules like what's in water. And when that happens, it creates a reaction that continues and creates like a chain link like this, which is a rigid, strong bond. That's how superglue works. We're taking it to another level, you guys. We are adding cotton or another fibrous material, could be your clothing, which is why you don't want to get it on your clothes. And that is going to take this reaction and make it even stronger because all the fibers in the cotton are going to fuse together making an even stronger bond. So let's talk about what happens when you put all this into water. And this is why it's so important that you fully cover it. Here is an example where I have cotton fully covered in glue, sprayed with accelerator. It's hard as a rock, but I don't have any cotton showing, right? Then I got this other example where also hard as a rock, but down in here, I didn't fully saturate it, right? So this cotton is loose. And here's what's gonna happen, you guys. First, when you put a fully saturated cotton, let's pretend we've got a rock on top of this and right, just a little bit is showing through. What happens when you throw it in water, it's clear. You see that? So if you only had a little bit of this showing, this would ultimately be clear and it wouldn't show up as bright white through your scape. However, if you were to take loose cotton and put it in water, it will be much whiter and it will be not only leaching into your aquarium, it will be a lot more visible in any cracks that might be showing. So let's take a look at a practical application where you've got heavy rocks that you're putting together like this. Now this is a great opportunity to use this because you wanna make sure that this doesn't topple over and hurt any of your fish or your tank. Now, where would you use this? Well, I think that this point right here is too specific for cotton. So we're gonna spot weld that later. Where we have an opportunity though, is in this area right here where we've got a lot of contact. So that's what you'd wanna be looking for. So we're gonna do the same thing. Despite the fact that this is heavy, I'm still not going to get, in fact, especially because it's heavy, I'm going to flatten this cotton out I'm not using more than just probably a quarter of a cotton ball flattened out. I do want to make sure that this goes exactly where I want it, which means I'm going to spot weld it first. I'm going to flatten it. My goal is to make sure that whatever I'm doing, it can be covered by the rock. Anything showing through, I'd be covering with moss or plants anyway. Then I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to carefully soak all of this cotton just to make sure, again, you kind of have to overdo this a little bit without trying to make too much of a mess on your hardscape. Now I'm gonna come back with that done. I'm gonna get my spot, I'm gonna cover it, and you can actually hit it with the accelerator for a quick second first before you put it on, just to make sure that you get a nice, strong bond. If there's any room down there, you can hit it with the accelerator again. This accelerator here that gets sprayed on your rocks, you're not gonna see that. It will dry, you're not gonna see it in the aquariums, don't worry about it. Done, right? I barely even had that for 10 or 15 seconds and we're nice and solid and good. Now, here's the thing I would do next. I would come back to this though and I would look again at this spot right here. This is gonna be the back of my hardscape and this is where I like to, again, I'm gonna use that term spot weld. I like to come in here with only the gel super glue, another reason why you use both, and I'm going to spot weld that position. I could even get in here and just fill this up. This is gonna be the back, so I'm not worried about it. I can fill that up, and because I wanna just keep working, I can go in here and get that sprayed. 
So now you can see that you've got a super strong bond here. You've got the reliance of the cotton. You've doubled it down. Ouch, jeez. Okay. Um, that, <laughs> it's hot, you guys. All right. Something to, you know what? I should have added this over here. Check this out. This bond plus cotton equals hot. Be careful with this, you guys. And one of the things you saw it smoking, right? That acceleration of the process is what gives off the heat. And that same acceleration can happen with your clothing. So you wanna make sure that you're careful. But even you can see there, if you get in here while that's happening, and it's not very long, okay? This is now inert. This is hard as a rock. I, I can get in here, I'm not worried about it. It's just right in that like 15 seconds where that reaction is taking place. Keep your fingers away from it. Now I'm also in a well-ventilated area. I'm not using a respirator, but if I were to be gluing a bunch of rocks together to make like a whole aquascape or an arch, something like that, I would be using a respirator because you don't wanna be breathing in a lot of these fumes. All right, cool. Let's talk about now what you would do once this is in your aquarium. So, see, I'm not even worried about dangling. I'm not even concerned about it. It's a hard, hard bond. Once you have that in your aquarium, then you're probably gonna wanna take a look around and see if any gaps are showing, if any cotton's showing, if there's anything you're concerned about. Now, we got that nice and covered. I've got no problems. I don't even have to cover anything in here. But what will likely happen is you will bond some rocks together, sometimes smaller ones, and a little bit of that cotton is gonna show through. And again, it will be clear if you do it right, but you might still see it. So what do you do? You take a plant like an Anubius or a Java fern or a Java moss or something like that, and you just plant around those areas and cover them up. And if you do all that, you're not only gonna have a super strong aquascape, you're gonna have a beautiful one as well. If you liked this video, if it helped you out, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and we'll see you on the next one.